Hello comic book fans, here's Earl Grey. Today I have a lot of Jaime Hernandez for you, especially, uh, especially that studio edition underneath here, which came in this nice cardboard box. Um, yeah, where to begin? Um, maybe a bit Earlier, this uh, sketchbook is from the late 80s and it shows um, how Fantagraphics has got uh, gotten bigger over the years um, because this book was a pretty huge um, Fantagraphics um, publication back in the day or oh, luxury uh, edition or if you want to call it, with Signature by Yame and Gilbert. I want to show you real quick the Yame part of this book here. It has some early art uh, in it. And shows uh, the affection of Yame Hernandez for female superheroes. And he's making fun of it and uh, at the same time doing a homage to Wonder Woman and, and stuff like that and pencil drawings oh here this is a favorite of mine of all German underst uh, drawings because it shows uh, every state of his art from um, loose cartooning to pretty detailed art or relatively detailed art i like it i use this uh, picture actually for some of my diy um, um, private copies of um, music cd covers so um yeah, don't let this go too long, but uh, music related, here is, here is his, uh, a small collection of um, punk rock flyers, which is pretty neat as well. So, but we want to talk about this beast here. And for size comparison, um, the studio edition is not as big as the studio edition of uh, Charles Burns' Black Hole, for example. Um, but it's still very huge. And it could be even a bit smaller um, because every page has this uh, black frame around it. Um, I would. Uh, be happy if they could do it without it uh, but yeah so each page has the the space around it that it really deserves so let's binding is an interesting thing here we have um, soon binding but every two or three pages if I can show you this one here, yeah. uh, we have this thing here going on. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, um, where the pages are glued together, and I guess uh, this is as it should be, and no mistake. <laughs> um, yeah, you get used to it, but some pages don't really open to the. A ribbon here. So what we get here on the very first page is a look into the drawer of Jan Hernandez with all the pens and stuff. He does it um, uses a brush. <laughs> I love this page here. It's like American abstract expressionism. Let's see if you can see it. Yes. Um, Really, you, 
uh, you could put this in a frame and show it off at an art exhibition of a very snobbish modern artist and yeah, everyone would say, hey, cool, it is cool, simple, good, uh, all right, I want to say, here yeah, another, uh, some stuff with uh, working equipment of uh, Jaime Hernandez, and a long interview with Jaime Hernandez by Gary Groth about panels, um, responsibility, the line, the line, influences. It's, uh, they wanted to focus on the working conditions and um, the modus operandi, so to speak, of Jaim Hernandez. Not so much about storytelling, but when it comes to Jaim Hernandez, um, you have to talk about his storytelling because he is really like Gary Groth says right in the beginning, a uh, cartoonist, because he thinks about the story as well as uh, uh, about the art. Um, it's two, uh, two sides of the same metal. So, here we begin uh, the part with the stories. Since uh, James does the storyboards for himself, he can be very um, sharp and, and short. Queen Rina, Life at 34 is rather an interesting choice for a story here because it's a, a side story, I would say. Um, maybe important for the history of uh, Love and Rockets. Yeah, maybe not. Um, maybe not. Um, but it shows us how Jaime Hernandez uses the space in a panel and how his characters are perfectly using uh, the space in the panels. What he does with uh, the room and, and how he creates a story with the, with the means of the cartoonist. I got a bit this Milo Manara feel um, I get when I read one of the better stories from Milo Manara, where he does uh, almost the same in um, creating a world with some, just some lines here. This is, uh, in terms of the background, pretty minimalistic. And even the foreground characters are sometimes a bit cartoony. And this is... Uh, pretty typical for Raymond Hernandez art, the switching between cartoony express, uh, expression and uh, realistic appearances. So, but the, uh, the first real important story here is uh, all this and Penny 2 from 87, 1987. Um, Love and Rocket started uh, 1982, so this is not one of the earliest stories. Here we have Penny Century after ma uh, marrying a millionaire, or a milliardaire, and She's playing some superhero game with uh, some uh, poor henchmen who have to deal with some cluppering from this beautiful lady here. And we have a flashback to the days before when um, Hopi and Maggie first met Penny Century. And Another thing which is really typical, the ladies here, like in the real life, change their hairdo over the years. Um, so you can tell uh, that it has to be a flashback just by uh, their different hairdos, even though it's maybe for the beginner, it's maybe not always uh, so simple to discern Maggie from Hopi, for an example. But uh, after a while you get the knack because Hopi 
distinctly have has a bit of a more sharper and edgier feel always. She's more the punk uh, rock lady, while Maggie here is a bit softer and this goes for um, her facial features and bodily features as well. She's a bit the rounded character and not so hard edge like Hopi. Every Love and Rockets reader is a bit in love with Maggie, I think. Uh, or with, for other reasons, uh, with um, Penny Century, she's, yeah, she has some features which makes it hard for a man not to look at panels with her. So, uh, another story is in the uh, Valley of the Polar Bears. One of the other favorites of mine. You can get a glimpse into the Love and Rockets universe and it's a good entry point. <laughs> Maybe not the cheapest entry point, uh, I must say, but um, you have an entry point into the Love and Rockets universe with this book here. And it's, it would, I really don't think uh, that I say too much when I say that you can, you can understand as a totally uh, newbie uh, what it's, what this all uh, is about. And you're really at the heart of the Love and Rockets universe because these stories are pretty essential. With the exception of um, the death of Speedy, which is not included here, but it's always in the background. They talk about Speedy and uh, how who is responsible or not responsible. And let's compare this page here with the already slightly oversized um, German edition. And here you can see the art. Um, these uh, two formats here. Um, and like in all studio editions and artist editions and whatnot, you can see the markers of the felt pen and uh, slightly uh, corrections with um, white out and here over this um, uh, text bubble, uh, he, he has corrected that. And this panel was cut out and yeah, obviously he did some copying here <laughs> and, and uh, added some of the drawing in the back. Yeah, and stuff like that, uh, which is always interesting. So, um, yeah, here you can see some of the white out as well, and here his fist. It's on every page. Um, you can ignore this, and you're totally fine with it. And this makes this book really fun uh, because you can really read these stories. And uh, even though uh, they picked uh, some stories and left uh, a lot out of obviously uh, with all these love and rocket stories um, but it reads very well as a whole um, just uh, well, a bit the same with a black hole um, studio edition where not every part of the uh, black hole was included but you could read this version of black hole this uh, abridged version. I wouldn't speak of uh, an abridged version of the Love Rockets universe because the Love and Rockets universe is so rich. This is Wigwam Bam 8 in my German edition about a creepy actor doing creepy games with yeah, grown girls who pretend to be little girls for money and uh, if you know the story this doesn't end too well um, and it's always um, 
It's always good to check out uh, the musical references in uh, Love and Rockets, for an example, Shoulder Knife. Uh, a pretty fantastic, even not the most contemporary, um, female, all female punk rock band from Japan and L7. Uh, they are always, uh, they have been great, <laughs> I must say, but check out their old um, music. This double page is very interesting as well because uh, for changing, altering the uh, proportions of the space in front and in the back, um, he cut, he, uh, he, he did some add-on here to change the proportions. So this is a really interesting story with Maggie in the middle of nowhere and starts pretty slow but then gets uh, very interesting and we see another side of Maggie and here's the end of the Chester Square story and some which is the same on the front. In the back of the studio edition there are some outtakes um, and this is the part where uh, we should start to drool and rightfully so because we get the mixture of pencil underdrawings and inkings above. This unfinished stuff is really maybe the best part in the whole book um, because we can view into the mind of the storyteller, Jem Hernandez. And here he finished the, these faces or almost finished them. Some pages you only can guess what it's all about. And these are covers, obviously. This one for Love and Rockets 17 and uh, Penny Century on a cover for uh, issue 6. This is, uh, this is a story which really looks nice, but as Jaime Hernandez mentions it uh, in an uh, annotation before, this story uh, turned out to be a bit too alike, like one of his uh, brothers, so he had to skip it. Um, and this is pretty... Uh, Raunchy um, pencil drawing page. He self rejected this part of the story, but <laughs> he uh, w uh, didn't want to um, erase it, so he kept the page. More of the pencil drawing stuff. So, and uh, this here is a pretty interesting, oh, beautiful drawing of Maggie. He used this panel later on, I guess, maybe that's this one, it's uh, pretty similar, <laughs> um, anyhow. And ah, he used Jerusalem crickets and the portraits of the stars of the band, this, they are somewhere else. Ah, yeah. So if you get the finished product, uh, it's uh, naturally slicker in appearance, and here you have the the uh, all the strokes of the pen of uh, Jaime Hernandez. So this page here was totally self-rejected later on, which is really a pity. Look at her face. And I like how she um, tears at his uh, shirt to pull him back into business. And here you can see uh, where um, Jaime uh, pondered if he uh, should show her feet or not. 
little details like that or the person here in the background that uh, didn't show up on the finished cover. This is a cover for a later um, issue of Love and Rockets. Ah, and here we have uh, some renditions of early um, Love and Rockets lore from 1987. And you see a bit more, the f more freely, more experimental um, approach here. I like how he did uh, the leaves in the trees with a pen, uh, with a marker. Just a detail here, but you s can really see uh, the master at work, so to speak. And one of the very earliest. Um, oh, stories that I've read because in Germany they started the whole Love and Rockets translation with Death uh, of Speedy and this is one of the first stories I've read where I really felt the oomp in Love and Rockets uh, where it really gripped me the love story between Maggie and uh, Speedy or the almost love story because he was in love with his uh, with her sister um, yeah and then he died. Spoiler, spoiler, but it's, it's called Death of Speedy. What should I do? And this is the last um, page of this pretty fantastic studio edition of the comics of Yame Hernandez. So, thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.